Hello everyone, my name is Devashish and I welcome you all to this video. So this is the second part. So in this uh, in this part, we are going to take a look at uh, the pre-compiled tool that gets shipped with Frida, which is known as Frida Trace. So how can you use this Frida Trace utility to trace different FBI calls within any Windows process? Uh, the process should be almost same with uh, Linux, uh, the command line options that it supports and um, other different things. Uh, so we are going to see it uh, on Windows platform. So before you get started, once you install Frida, right? So you have to make sure that you install this in your class path, uh, this scripts directory and this Python directory is present so that you should be able to access it from, you know, anywhere, any folder. Uh, so let's go here. So this will be our working directory. So um, here, what we are going to do here, do is let's open command prompt and and for demonstration purpose i'll be launching uh, notepad dot exe and i'll be tracing an api call uh, called which is known as message box so when you search anything here so as you can see notepad actually tells uh, this message through a message box and it internally calls user 32 message box here. So we are going to see how can you trace uh, this API call through Frida. So let's get started. Uh, so the utility that we are going to use is Frida trace.exe. So let's get started. Frida trace.exe. So if you do this, um, so you have to launch Frida trace trace.exe and it has a command line option which is known as which is f dash f so f actually accepts the image or the process you are willing to launch uh, so in this case it is going to be notepad windows system 32 notepad.exe so if you just execute this what you're going to see here uh, it, it the Frida trace.exe has launched notepad for us and this is how the process structure looks like so in 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 one of our next videos we are going to see you know uh, what is the actual operation that are performed by this additional process that get launched we'll we'll see it in the we'll see it in the next uh, in one of our next videos so now uh, we are interested in message message box api call so to be able to hook to be able to uh, intercept that api call what we have to do here uh, so for this i'll just you know keep it open here i'll close it uh, i'll keep this folder open so that you know for a specific reason that you will get to know uh, so x actually accepts uh, the module you are willing to hook uh, which is user32.dll and and i accepts the api name message box w so now if you launch it what you should see here no it did not work actually just a second so now if you are since we are interested in message box api call uh, so you have to sp specify in that uh, you know, command line message box w and the module name is user 32 dll that you have to define with uh, x command line option now let's get started so as you can see here again uh, it has uh, launch notepad.exe and what you have to notice here is the reason why i opened this folder it has created an additional uh, folder which is known as you know handlers and it has created a, a javascript file within this folder which is actually your actually uh, the message box hook handler so if you want to intercept uh, the you know arguments that are being passed to this message box api call so you have to modify this function and so um, friday is going to uh, intercept those things for us so this is for on enter and this is for one on leave so when the api actually exits you have you can log different um, parameters such uh, for example return value and other things uh, so we are going to make some minor uh, changes in this uh, particular handler 
so let's do it so for now we'll just close it we'll just clear it close it and I'll just you know modify this to um, so for example we are interested if we are if we are interested in this argument So let's Google message box W. So handle is the first parameter. Second parameter is LP text. So if you want to print any of those, what do you have to do here? Uh, so what do you have to do? You just you know copy paste some of these things. Message box and the first argument is handle. Handle we are uh, handle we are not interested. Let's say let's print this text lp text and args1 and the second parameter is lp caption lp caption and second is args2 so our um, api handler script is ready so now we'll just you know we'll launch this application again once again so let's see how it works now so as you can see we have seen some additional messages here that instrumenting function is now uh, the exact JS file that we have just edited now if we just trigger the message box call again as you can see here it is actually printing those values for us but it is not printing those argument value because we have to dereference it so we have to read those pointers and you know print it here so that is why we are not able to see this so to be able to see those you know argument passed to it so we have to make some minor modification here uh, we'll have to dereference that pointer and you know dump it here so if you do this it should give you it should give you the you know string that is being passed as a second argument of message box so let's test it for now if it is working as intended okay we'll launch it cancel sorry I press something else I guess yeah now if you just trigger this message box API call you should be able to see that here cannot find this particular string which is here uh, so that is how you know uh, that is how Frida trace can be used to hook into several APIs intercept arguments so it's pretty easy we have uh, in our last WinAppDBG series we have seen you have to write pretty much a lot of code to do that but in Frida as you can see it's extremely easy that you will actually absolutely fall in love with it uh, so hooking into function is super easy with Frida uh, so uh, that's what I wanted to discuss in this video uh, so if you find it useful please uh, consider subscribing to this channel uh, I'll be uploading a lot of other videos on Friday as well and lot of I'll, and I'll cover a lot of other uh, reverse engineering topics in my next videos. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.